Welcome back to another episode of the Crypto Serpent. And if you do enjoy the videos, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. All right, so crypto executives defend industry as Congress considers oversight. Overall, overall, the events that occurred yesterday have been actually quite positive for the industry. Although right now, the market isn't necessarily reflecting that in this very second, the conversations, the points made throughout yesterday were very encouraging and actually more than I expected. I, I knew that it wasn't going to be negative. Like I, I know that a lot of people struggle with this particular concept, but mass adoption of the cryptocurrency space is becoming a real thing. In the 2017 bull run, it was all based on hype. Hype and speculation, hype and speculation. Adoption is occurring. The adoption of cryptocurrency is causing the market to behave different than what people are trying to make it out that it was going to. And that in itself is very, very important to understand. 2017, all you got to do is think about the phone you had in 2017 and look at the phone you have today in 2021 and how different are they in technology and what they do and how they're able to do it. And that's why comparing to the 2017 bull run, 2013, is to me ignorant because we are not in 2017. This isn't 2017, this is 2021. It's its own thing. It will do its own path. It's not going to be copy paste of what's happened in the past because the future is different. So a company officials say at hearing that digital assets wouldn't easily be regulated under existing financial rules. So a lot of things happen, right? So obviously there, there was the, the talks that occurred and different people being interviewed. The industry has the potential to improve a lot of people's lives. The FTX trading chief executive, Sam, spoke about. Senior executives from Stablecoin's issuer um, and all these, all these different things, uh, it's, it's all very, very important to, to, to discuss where, where does the future lie for the industry, right? And where does XRP sit in all this, right? And we'll get to that, of course. But overall, a important meeting, a meeting that was pro-crypto. And that overall is very, very, very important and, and very important for the future. So it was positive. It was positive. And to me, that there is really, really cool to, to see. Now, as we move forward, analysts are saying that the ph there is now phenomenal risk to reward ratios despite the lawsuits. So Real Vision Chief Executive Raul Paul is explaining why he is a holder of XRP and how he sees the crypto asset reward ratio. So he's saying the reward ratio is really, 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 really positive here. Now, when he talks about the reward ratio, he's, uh, he's saying, you know, 10x uh, and you know we've got to understand that analysts always go for a more conservative approach but he's saying you know i can see if it, everything gets resolved at 10x from here and and he says that that's a no-brainer you know why would you not take a 10 to 1 risk reward that has a catalyst around it a 10 to 1 i mean that's a pretty bold statement from someone who's you know a pretty pretty up there from, from an analyst uh, point of view so more people are going to start to turn to this. They're going to start to look at XRP and be like, risk to reward ratio, let's put our money on that. And that there will drive, of course, the initial avalanche of the price breaking out. Now, XRP tricks uh, before breaking out to $1. Yes, you know, we are hovering around, you know, at the time of making this, we're sitting at 85 cents, 3.96% up for the day. The, the whole industry at the moment, you know, is sitting on either three, four percent up or a little bit down. Luna has been, you know, dominating in that particular space, you know, like almost 10 percent up today alone. Um, an ecosystem that is growing very, very rapidly as well. So we will, of course, talk about the prices and, you know, how how we're structured at the moment and what are some of the possibilities. And one of those possibilities, of course, is that we can still, as, and I'll show you later on, there are opportunities for the price to break down again before we continue to go up it is consolidating at the moment you know the key support levels are 75 cents and 70 cents and the key resistance levels are 89 cents and a dollar and right now we're sitting at that 85 cents we don't have a 
I go green or I go red just yet. Now, I like Crypto Bull and I like this, right? So two years of accumulation, two years of accumulation. I mean, that is a very, very, very long time. We do know that the longer the, uh, the, the longer the accumulation, the bigger the explosion will be, but we're waiting patiently. Very, very, very patiently. I like this as well, um, and you know, we'll go over things like this, but it just so happens, you know, like that breakdown that we had, it literally touched exactly this particular line. Coincidence? I don't think it was co a coincidence at all, but we will talk about the possibilities of that coming through again. Now, let's have a listen to this, and then let's discuss uh, um, the details of it. So, uh, Ms. Haas, if you, you indicated in your testimony that, quote, every asset listed on Coinbase platform is subject to rigorous legal compliance and security review, close quote. Uh, could you provide us specific details on, uh, on what Coinbase's process has been to be able to make that type of statement? Thank you for the question. Yes. So specifically for the legal review, we assess each asset under the Howey test where we, as Brian Brooks spoke about earlier, through the Crypto Ratings Council have established a framework where we look at the risk factors and we determine whether or not it, it meets characteristics of the Howey test. It's a risk-based assessment. It is not a black and white test. But based on our assessment, we believe it's lower risk that these are securities and before we list them on our platform. We separately do a compliance review. Our compliance review includes looking at the developers of the token, ensuring they're not on an OFAC sanctions list. We look at to make sure it's not a scam, that there's actual people using this coin, that it was developed in sound manners. And then we look at a security review, review to understand the underlying code to say, can we provide custody for this? Is this at heightened risk of an attack or someone pulling the value from these assets? So it's security, legal, and compliance. So let's get this straight. Coinbase did all that before listing XRP. And yet somehow, you know, the SEC Coinbase, every, like how, how do you list XRP and then take it off the exchange? So there's a big debate going on at the moment. And this happened from yesterday's meetings as well that occurred that a lot of people are saying that Coinbase rushed to get XRP off the exchange and really shouldn't have. But I want to know, I want to know what you think, right? Should Coinbase, did Coinbase rush when that news came out that there was a lawsuit to, to take a off the exchange because they did it and then everyone else followed, but they did it and then everyone else followed, right? For me personally, I think it was rushed, but I wanna know what you think. Like, what are your thoughts around that? And is there now a possibility that even with the lawsuit still continuing, that Coinbase puts it back on? Unlikely, just my, my perspective on that. And again, it's not advice, but I don't think it's gonna happen before the lawsuit finishes. But once that finishes and wraps up, it will literally be days and you know it'll, it'll come back very, very strong. But let's look at Atani, let's have a look at some indicators. As we look at the indicators in the, at the moment, we're looking in particularly on the daily, we begin with that. You can see that the MACD starting to edge closer again, but we're still far from it. RSI sitting very close to the oversold, 3.3% up at the time of making this. You know, we were a little bit, a little bit higher uh, a few hours ago. When we look at the hourly, not much movement. Right? Uh, yes, we are up. We went as high as eighty six at some stage earlier today. But really, there hasn't been that much of a movement. Like, even though the Congress and everything that that occurred was uh, relatively positive. Not, the market has not yet started to move. Some coins have, but the majority of the market hasn't. When you look at the four hour, you can see that the MACD is starting to, you know, it is bullish and you can see that the RSI is sort of sitting almost towards the middle. And then you look at the 12 hour and the 12 hour has come back into a bullish pattern, but it's still, it's still waiting, right? It's not, it's not breaking out towards, uh, towards that $1 mark just yet, just yet. Now, when you look at the daily, like I said, you can see that the from a, a Bollinger Band point of view, it's sitting towards the bottom, not even not even at the middle yet. But we have to break above a dollar, consolidate above a dollar, and then see how how this particular move continues from here. But right now, under a dollar, anything and everything can still happen. Now, from a drawing perspective, I want to kick off with this, 
And the reason why I want to do that is because you can see that every time, every time the RSI has gone into the levels that we're at now, it has com it has shot off and back up very aggressively every time we've hit this level. Now, where we are right now, there's a couple of scenarios that I want you to see. So first things first, have a look at that RSI. It is heading towards the territory where it will jump off and then continue to, to continue to spike. I know that you guys like you know 2017 overlays and and you know how how is that going to how is that going to play out if that if it were to play out that way. I'm not going to contemplate to and talk too much about this. This is what it would look like if it were a 2017 rehearsal. But I don't think that's going, that's how it's going to go. Now we did go, of course, you know, we crashed all the way to 55 and now we're sort of sitting in this window where really breaking above 130 to 135 and consolidating above 135 will make sure that we have broken out of this channel. Now, the scenario that I do want to touch on is this. There is still a possibility that we could revisit 55 cents. And I want to mention that and I want you guys to be prepared for that because should the market decide to go down again and the reason for that is because you see this right if we're following this then it will touch down on 55 again and then continue to go up now again caution when it comes to this because we like right now where we are at, at 85 cents at the time of making this it could go either way it could touch that support one more time and then we take off so be mindful of that be ready for that expect that and if you're holding, just simply hold, walk away. If you are an opportunist and you're looking to see if there is a potential to put in a buy order again around that 50, 55 cents mark, phenomenal reward uh, uh, rewards for you know ga gaining XRP tokens at that particular price. And again, it's not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor, but I'm going to enjoy every single day of, of being here with you guys. If you learned something new today, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. As always, thank you, and I look forward to see you on the next one.